Chris. This is Christy. And this is our Ram Promaster 2500 named Timber. <laughs> this content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. living in Timber for about a month now. We decided to uh, do full-time van life for about six months. We wanted to see if being outdoors and being in a van full-time was a sustainable lifestyle and to really allow us some time away from our corporate jobs um, to be outdoors, to bike, to hike, uh, to sled down some snow fields out here in Mount Rainier and really just spend some more time together. All right, if you want to come inside, I will show you around. Right here we have our cooktop underneath this big block of wood. Um, which is great because we wanted a permanent cooktop. Um, didn't want to have to set things up every time we wanted to cook. Um, but then when we're not cooking, we still have a full counter. Um, really nice, you know, to be prepping for cooking or things like that. So it is propane. Um, propane is underneath this cabinet here. It is vented and sealed from the inside. So worst case, there is a leak, it will vent to the outside. So underneath our cooktop here, we have our biggest sliding drawer, which is all of our galley is just sliding drawers. Um, this one's mainly our pots and pans, cutting boards, things like that. But they all latch into place and they're all soft closed, which is really nice. And then underneath, we have three cabinets here, all with magnetic latches. Um, this one, we have our toilet just for more emergencies. It's kind of your typical camping toilet where you just put a bag in it and our trash as well in, in this one. So at this side of our galley, uh, we do have a sink here with a 12 volt water pump. I wish the sink was a little bit bigger. It's a little hard to wash pots and pans in here. So definitely if we were gonna do this again, probably get a medium, maybe even a large sink since we have plenty of counter space. Um, we have a soap pump that's built in, which honestly is one of my favorite things. You don't have a soap bottle flying around, don't have to get it out. You can just pump right there. Then we actually have two switches back here. One is for our water pump to turn that on and off um, so you can control it at the faucet but also turn the pump off completely. And then this one back here is actually an actuator for our propane. Um, so this seals up the propane so you know if you accidentally bump the burner it won't come on unless you have this propane switch on. Moving up back here we have a towel rack. We have to have the fruit hammock as all van lifers do. Um, behind we have our carbon monoxide alarm. I uh, definitely want to be really careful about that. Under cabinet LED lighting otherwise there's a pretty dark shadow under here. Um, since all the lights are up on the ceiling. For our sink water supply, we don't have your traditional permit tank set up. Um, we do have the water jugs. Um, so we have two jerry cans in here, six gallons each. So we have 12 gallons of fresh. And then on this side, we have our gray, um, which is six gallons. So a little bit more fresh, but it actually works out pretty well for us since we drink a ton of water right now in the summer. We usually can go about one and a half tanks of fresh to one gray tank. Um, and then behind our gray tank is actually our sealed propane compartment right there too. So above our galley, uh, we have cabinets running all the way to the back of the van. Uh, the back half are more like clothing and books and things like that. This front half is more of our food things. I'm going to show you our most organized cabinet here. So we actually didn't originally have these div shelf dividers in here. Um, and that's something we added in, but it allows us to use a lot more of the space. And they're actually on metal tracks, so we can adjust the, the shelf height depending on what we're having in here. Obviously our collection of water bottles fits nicely on the side, but if we ever wanted to take it out, they're fully removable too. So the cabinets are all on gas struts with magnetic latches. So we've never had an issue with them opening when we've gone down some rough roads. So one of the things that we really wanted for this van was an open layout. We knew we'd be spending tons of time in here, uh, which is why we love our table that comes up. So it allows us to have a proper dining space. We really like having dinner dates. That's one thing we did at home and wanted to continue doing in the van, nice home cooked meals. Um, the only con of this table is it's a little hard to get in and out of when you're in my seat, but overall it's really nice. Um, Chris likes to edit photos at the table. I like to read. So it's just allowed us to have that sense of normalcy while maintaining a super open layout in the van. Opposite of our galley over here, we have our couch and some of our chairs here. Underneath our couch, um, this is actually just a separate cushion, which we are going to put a hinge on the back of it because it is really annoying to get to our fridge and freezer because you kind of have to hold this up and then also open up. Um, so if we were doing like a grocery load, we'll probably just move this off to the side usually, which I'll do now to talk about the fridge. We have the Dometic CFX3 um, DZ95, which is the biggest dual zone fridge they make. So we can control each of the temperatures separately. Um, so this one's typically our freezer and it's the smaller one. Uh, and then this is the bigger side and it's our fridge which we can go for about two weeks um, with restocking fresh veggies periodically. And then 
This side, like I said, is our freezer. Um, freezer is a big one for us to have ice cubes. Uh, really like having ice for mountain biking and things like that. That is our fridge and freezer setup. It is. Uh, it can run an AC or DC. We have it running on our DC power system. Um, it actually does not draw a lot of power, even though we have it set to 39 degrees and I think five degrees, which is recommended by Dometic. Right above our fridge slash couch um, is kind of our control panel. Uh, up top here, we have our thermostat for our heater. We have our, all of our lights on a dimmer, which is actually really nice. You can dim them down a little bit before bed, um, so you're not waking up or trying to go to sleep with really harsh lights, maybe if you're reading in bed. Um, below that, we have our battery monitor, and then after that, right now, we have our switch for our inverter. It's a 1500 watt inverter, which has been amazing. Um, we have a little shop vac that we use to vacuum up. Uh, we ran a hair dryer. Uh, crock pot like it can really run whatever we need it to so above our bed uh, we do have the max air fan with the remote right there as well and then to get that cross ventilation so that's super important with the fans uh, we do have a vented window on our sliding door so we get that we can either pull or push air honestly if I was gonna do it again I would do two fans when it is really really hot and we're cooking since we cook with propane the van gets pretty hot so it would be nice to have another fan right above the kitchen here next to our fridge right next to the bed here as our chairs for the dining room table we have no dead space here. Um, this is usually where we store our laundry. So we have laundry bags in there. And then this other one, we keep things like the vacuum and some other cleaning supplies, but super easy to get to. Nice to just throw your dirty clothes right on this cushion. And then we can just toss them underneath the cushion uh, when we clean up. So last but not least on the interior here, we have our bed. Um, it is an RV queen and it is tall enough so we can sleep sideways. I am six foot and Christy, my partner, is 5'8". Both can sleep sideways. I'd say the only way, the only time it's never not long enough is if you were like locking out your knees and trying to sleep super rigid. In terms of the cabinets over our legs, never been an issue. Maybe I've bumped my knee on it once or twice, but never anything bad. And yeah, it's, it's a great length for, you know, like I said, myself, six foot and Christy, who is 5'8". You know, it's not quite tall enough for me to sit upright. I'm a little hunched over here, but when you wake up from sleeping, you don't hit your head instantly if you jolt up. Um, really do enjoy the, the height though, because uh, that's important for the garage, which we're going to go talk about next. As I mentioned, really nice having the tall bed, so we have a lot of storage back here in the garage. On the right here, we do have really deep, narrow shelves. So these go all the way to the front of the bed. Um, so we keep things like our camp chairs, uh, yoga mats, most of our biking and hiking bags and this one and things like leveling blocks, recovery boards, tools, kind of the van maintenance recovery gear down in this one. In the center here, we have three massive drawers. Again, they go all the way almost up to the front of the bed. Um, and this bottom one here, we have a lot of miscellaneous camping gear. Uh, we keep our shower in here, first aid, hammocks. The top two are my clothes and camera gear. Um, Christy's clothes and camera gear, some hiking gear as well. So we have the Julka hot tap, uh, which is basically a tankless hot water heater. We keep the water jug right here, uh, just another six gallon jerry can. Um, and then we have our shower faucet, and then we actually hang the shower right here, uh, which is really great, it allows us to shower just right here. Um, we use this adventure mat, highly recommend that, keeps the feet clean while showering, and it runs off our uh, small propane tanks to heat the water, and it has uh, actually an LED display so we can control the temperature of the water too. So on the other side of our garage is where we're keeping two mountain bikes, both full-size mountain bikes. Um, it is very tight back there. I definitely shift these cabinets or drawers over to the right, um, so that way we could get a full you know, pull out system for the bikes. So in terms of electrical, we do have a solar panel up on the roof and then a DC to DC charger while we're, while we're driving. Then we have two AGM batteries as our house batteries that actually have worked really well for us. We've had really no issues running low on power. One of my favorite things about the van is the suspension work we did to it, which not a lot of ProMasters do. I have a lot of experience with off-roading, so I wanted something that rode really nice like some of my off-roading trucks I've had in the past. Um, so what we actually did is we went to Van Compass, who were really helpful, and we got a full suspension setup from them and a leveling kit. And then we did uh, Bilstein shocks up front and Fox shocks in the rear that are tuned to the weight of the van. It helps a lot with sway, it helps a lot with washboard. Any, there's no more harsh hits anymore. It's all really soft. Good for forest roads, obviously still a two-wheel drive van, but just gives us a little bit more comfort as we're finding 
you know, the, the rougher roads. And then we are riding on BF Goodrich KO2's great, amazing off-roading tire. Like I said, I have some off-roading experience, so I knew what to look for in tires. Um, the big reason we wanted these, again, two-wheel drive van, wanted to help us out as much as possible with traction, um, but the biggest reason is snow. These tires are killer in the snow, and uh, we wanted everything on our side when go, going out and skiing adventures. This is our bug wall. We cannot recommend it enough. We have it down probably 99% of the time. Um, it just snaps open really easily, and if we're loading things in and out, we'll actually just snap it to the side. Um, so really easy to get in and out, but it does an amazing job of keeping out bugs. Mosquitoes find me a very tasty snack, so I try to uh, stay inside when it's super buggy at night, and this keeps them all out. Thank you so much for checking out our van. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned a few things about our build. If you want to follow along on our adventures, it is timber.the.van on Instagram, and uh, we hope to see you out on the road. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.